advanced care planning in Alberta. What is advanced care planning? Well, there are times in our lives where we, we lose the ability to be able to look after ourselves. It could be after an accident, it could be after you get very sick, it could be during the course of intense medical treatment, or where you start having a decline of, of your cognitive abilities, your, your ability to make decisions logically for yourself. Now, when you're in that position, it is hard. It is hard for you and it's hard for your family because your family has to look after you and make choices. The advantage to having advanced care planning is that you've named, while you're able to, someone that you trust to make these decisions for you. Now, people often hear words like when they hear advanced care planning, they don't necessarily think about other words that we use for that in law, but things like a personal directive, that's probably one that's used often. Also, a living will. Living will, uh, personal directive, advanced care planning, we're talking about the same thing. We're talking about a document that allows another person to make decisions for you while you're still alive, but cannot take care of yourself or make decisions for yourself. In that document, you can set out you know, your options for, uh, do you live in your home as long as you can, or do you live into a care facility? Uh, you let someone make decisions for you about you know, whether you get medical treatments or not, if there's an option that your medical professionals put forward. Uh, in addition, your preferences are, are recorded in terms of, do you prefer to be at home if you're gonna pass away, or in a facility? Uh, it even deals with your social interactions in terms of where you live, who you live with, your, your clothing, your everything, religious uh, beliefs you want, you can address as much or as little as you want. And the same for the type of care. You can be as detailed as if you're in a vegetative state, which is again, not something we ever want to think about, versus you know where you're just cognitively impaired or you know, there's a whole range and you work with your lawyer to draft the document to make sure that it reflects your wishes. So if you lose your ability to choose, that the person is well equipped that you, you name to look after you in terms of the your care you get, uh, that they have those skills. Now, what's not included in advanced care planning? Well, your stuff. These, these documents deal with you and your person, but it doesn't deal with your stuff. That's your will. Your will decides who will get your stuff after you pass, and you'll also have a document called an enduring power of attorney, and that lets someone deal with your stuff. Uh, make decisions for your stuff as long as you are alive, but you do not have capacity to make those decisions for yourself. There are a number of options, and these this, these group of papers, the will, uh, advanced care planning, uh, and your, your enduring power of attorney are 100% the best uh, example of an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure in law because they're very, very uh, low cost to produce, but they will save thousands of dollars in, if you don't have them in place. In the event that you don't have advanced care planning, especially if there's a dispute between family members as to what's important for you in terms of how you're being looked after, it can go to court and at a minimum take two, three, four months to get someone appointed. And if there's a conflict, create even more problems. And we've seen these every once in a while in the media where you'll have maybe a spouse and a parent or a sibling who have differing ideas on what kind of care a person should receive. And they go to court and they fight over who gets to make those decisions. Sometimes the root is religious based, sometimes that result is just emotional based, but anytime you have that conflict, you have to be careful. Now, why it doesn't continue after you pass away? Well, because then there's, you don't need someone to make decisions for you. You would have other places to name what kind of funeral you'd have and whatnot. You can include it here also, just so your wishes are known, but we just wanna make sure that you have a document to ensure that your wishes are followed when you can't look after yourself.